Hello. Uh, possibility. My 2023 TED Reflections. So first, to those of you listening to this, I highly recommend actually opening up the newsletter because there's so many links that you can save and watch TED Talks later. Just a thought, but I will read through it. Bear with me. So here we go again. When I wrote this, I was sitting on a plane flying back from yet another TED conference. My mind and soul and body is aching with so many impressions and conversations, all affected by nutritional disruptions to my regular microbiome, less sleep, and lack of proper movement. Oh well, Tedsters have a name for it, Tedache. This time was super special as Jessica and I were joined for the first time by one of our kids, Theo, while we spent, as usual, most time apart, connected with different people. It certainly added joy and happiness being together intermittently and experiencing TED together. I'm often asked after all these years why I go, what my objectives are. My answer is typically as simple as it is complex and boils down to the fact that the TED community offers a much needed and rare opportunity for a collective deep breath, a much necessary pause a mindful reflection. It's like the annual pit stop for the curious and concerned. It's a sanctuary where a few thousand people gather to learn, to exchange ideas, and to better understand how the significant forces of change around us can be converted to the kind of elevated and flourishing humanity we all so desperately like to see. Perhaps what I both love and appreciate the most these days is that TED gives space to a wide diversity of ideas and people that I'd never be exposed to otherwise. And they change me, and I hope makes me better. Lastly, the TED conference community also has a bias for action. It's not just academic and intellectual, but also impatient and entrepreneurial. Magical moments happen every year at TED where powerful ideas meet powerful resources that can help those ideas get stronger legs and wider wings. The Audacious Project is probably the best manifestation of that spirit. Trying to summarize a TED is impossible, at least a few hours after it ended. But if I don't try, I'm not sure I will do much better as impressions risk fading and take a back seat to the thousands of emails and tasks that are begging for my attention. So here we go. Two things stood out for me. First, Ted as the counter narrative. Chris Anderson, the head of Ted, used this phrase himself to describe the collective sentiment during the week. I think it captures well how I felt. We clearly live in interesting and very challenging times. We are living through disruption after disruption, and we're all mourning the loss of our predictable futures. Change is everywhere, and our institutions are clearly not managing these transitions well, and neither are most of us. Change often doesn't bring out the best in our human behavior, does it? But I felt a sense of alignment in the community that, that our dominant public narrative needs to change. We are all exhausted by the constant back and forth, the dehumanizing and utterly unproductive blaming, naming, and shaming. We can do better than this, and we must. Humanity is facing powerful new technological shifts that require us to be at our best game, not our worst. It was palpable this week that the TED community is eager, ready, and willing to embrace our future with a different posture than the one we're surrounded by in media and most other conversations. It's refreshing and it is hopeful. Second, artificial intelligence will change almost everything. Many, if not all, sessions covered AI in one form or the other. It is impossible today to not be affected by AI. 
And the possibilities of this emerging technological landscape are incredible. But they are also frightening, beyond our comprehension, which makes them nightmarish. I felt that Ted curated AI deliberations masterfully and completely. They hosted the most alarming critics as well as the most gung-ho optimists. My personal take today is that I'm slightly more optimistic than I'm fearful. I recognize that AI will change humanity in ways we can't understand. So humility and caution are needed in bigger doses than our leaders typically demonstrate. That's the concerning part to me. The more optimistic aspect is that AI will empower every human with its own teacher or tutor. If you believe that knowledge will set us free, then we might see an era of human flourishing ahead that we could only dream of. Hey, it's possible. In addition, I don't see the alternatives given our ge geopolitical situation. We simply must be the best at these technologies in order to at least give us the option to have some level of influence over them and us. If we don't, I'm sure we won't like the results. So like with most changes before us, we simply have to lean in, understand what is required of us and make the most of them. I will do what I've done for a few years. Below I've listed in the order they appeared on stage the talks that I want to share. I attended 90 different types of conversations and sessions, so I won't be listing them all. That doesn't mean they weren't good, but I'm trying to give you my favorite ones and why. Here we go. Angus Harvey is a good news reporter. He presented with new, what news could look like. And I think our media is a major contributor to the divisiveness in our public discourse. They are stuck in a negative mindset. And I like what Angus and the Future Crunch organization he has founded are doing to present a more balanced and accurate portrayal of the state of affairs. Jennifer Dudna is a Nobel laureate in chemistry for a groundbreaking genome engineering and technology CRISPR. In her talk, she introduced, to me at least, the combination of CRISPR and metagenomics and how we can now look at entire populations of organisms, microbiome, versus just one single one. Precision microbiome editing offers enormous potential to find solutions to our most significant diseases. The Innovative Genomics Institute is also a 2023 audacious project grantee. Golshifti Farahane is an Iranian actor, musician, and activist. She gave a powerful talk about the oppression of women in Iran. She quoted, death breaks the cage but doesn't kill the bird. We need to go on. And I also linked to an appearance with Coldplay that she participated in, which is quite powerful. Tom Graham is the founder of Metaphysic, and he presented the state of deep fakes. It was impressive and incredibly disorienting. I need to think more about this. But I actually have a hard time seeing the accretive value in these types of technologies. I am sure I'm wrong, but this feels like a technology application that has more downside than upside to me. Benjamin Zander, this was special for us since we first met Ben 23 years ago and have learned so much from him. He led the audience in singing as a way to present the art of the possible. The feeling in the room was special and might be hard to capture on video. However, just listen to his distinction between a positive attitude and possibility. That alone is worth it. And also, allow ourselves to be inspired by classical music, Beethoven, and the energy of an 84-year-old master. Greg Brockman is the co-founder of OpenAI. He presented the next version of ChatGPT. It was fascinating. And Chris led a very honest conversation afterward where he pushed back on some of the risks this talk is already up, as you can see by the hot link of this post. The AI critics. There were three main critics in order of the level of critique. Yejin Choi, Gary Marcus, and Eliezer Yudkovsky. I'm listing them here as one, as it's hard to single them out. If you want to understand the risks, you almost have to listen to them all, as they offer different aspects of risks like how Yejin Choi believes AI can be unbelievably intelligent but shockingly stupid, or Gary Marcus calls for a need for a UN-type agency for AI. 
I was encouraged to see them given space and time, and it's clear that there's a lot we must and can do to mitigate the more extreme bad box scenarios. Sal Khan really needs no introduction, the founder of Khan Academy. I would say he represents my view on AI most closely. It will change education for the better in ways we can't even imagine. And if the other guy has AI, we have to have it too. Jennifer Skuba, I'm glad Jennifer was invited. Demographics is destiny, they say. Our global population is changing right underneath us. Birth rates are falling faster than anyone imagined, and our global population will shrink in the decades to come. China is expected to have its population by the turn of the century. This will have enormous consequences for us all. How do we prepare and turn that into a better future? Ian Bremer, I thought Ian did a great job summarizing our geopolitics, and that is not easy. He discussed where we find ourselves, and he covered the orders of the past and how a third digital global order is emerging, as opposed to prior ones of security and economics, and what we might expect from this transition. Very insightful. Ali Hajimiri, wireless energy. I can't evaluate how likely this is, but Ali and his team are working on sending solar panels to space, where they can capture eight times more energy, and then beam the solar back to Earth, or the energy, I should say. If that works, well, wow. Nadia Tolokonikova, a very powerful talk by the leader of the Pussy Riot, a Russian punk group known for staging protests. It is impossible to not admire anyone who risks their own life for what they believe in. Unapologetic, authentic, and powerful, and obviously important. Doris Mitch, incredible images of stacking photos showing the flight patterns of birds. Just share beauty, no message, no politics, just natural awe. Peter Mackindo, one of my favorite talks, certainly top 10. I won't ruin it for you since there is a plot involved. He shared lessons learned from his activism, and I could not agree more with this. We need to direct our energy towards the crisis of belonging instead of believing. We are so obsessed with opinions and what people think. I believe we need to care more about how people are, and be more concerned about behaving and belonging than believing. Hannah Ritchie, a very important talk, particularly for our youth. Hannah is a data scientist committed to climate change. She presented the data around how much progress we have made, which is a narrative worth hearing. She did not present it as a case for not doing more. On the contrary, she grounded it in the important insight that in order to get motivated to take action, we must bolster our convictions on what is doable. I've always believed we can't present problems as a path to extinctions. We must invoke desire for change, not fear of it. If not, we will never build the coalitions necessary to affect systemic change. Gary Cooper, Go Chicago, loved seeing Gary who is building a system for a circular local economy. We have a lot of opportunities all over to waste less and be smarter about using our resources. For my fellow Chicago, let's join the movement. Nicole Rycroft, this is a great example of how we can change entire supply chains. In this case, the paper and pulp industry. I liked her pragmatic approach and the way partnerships have enabled rather impressive progress. George Whitesides, elegant talk on how to combat wildfires. It's a big problem for people suffering from them, as well as from a climate perspective. He presented an action-oriented and data-driven approach to what we can do about it. Shane Campbell Statton, evolutionary biologist from Princeton, made such a compelling case for the interdependence between human and animal kingdoms. A powerful example of Chernobyl wolves. Andy Dunn, another Chicagoan. Wow, Bono Bonobo's founder a vulnerable personal story about bipolar disorder and how he overcame it and why mental illness is more common than we think, particularly on the, in the entrepreneurial community. It was moving and inspiring. Gus Worland, wonderfully human Australian, shared his regrets in losing his mentor to suicide and the importance for all of us to have the backs of the people we love the most. Loved his human spirit, a real hugger, and he truly lived it. Later, when a speaker struggled, he jumped up on stage and gave her a warm hug. He truly lives his message, always inspiring to see 
and he also founded a Gotcha for Life Foundation. Maya Shankar, a cognitive scientist and the host of a Slight Change of Plans podcast, shared her own stories about how to deal with unexpected change when life throws you curveballs. Particularly inspiring to hear her own challenges she so graciously shared and how she's trying to learn from them. Sixto Cancel, moved by this talk about Sixto's experience in foster care and how to change our entire foster care system. His solution was surprisingly simple, kinship. Inspiring story based on his personal experience all converted into a promising solution and another audacious project grantee. Richard Reeves, important talk about the struggle of boys. I've read and followed Richard for a while and find both his why, what and how to deal with this irrefutable. Good podcast interview with him on Barry Weiss as one example if you want to learn more and can't wait for the release of his talk. Sarah Jones shared her personal experience with cancel culture in a most vulnerable and personal way. We all felt her pain. It just has to stop. Sheena Mead. I love this simple and powerful idea. Automatically clear criminal records from people who are eligible. It was shocking to learn how many people can't get their records cleared due to thick red tape, even though they are eligible. And records are being cleared thanks to Sheena. Her Clean Slate initiative is another audacious project 2023 grantee. Yat I'm not a metaverse traveler, nor do I fully understand crypto, Web3, DAO or DeFi. So I really appreciated his masterful explanation for why this is happening and why it most likely will be part of our future in more meaningful ways. Data is the new labor and it will help democratize economic participation. Very elegant talk. Anna Greca a curiosity-driven scientist who is at the forefront of genetics. She is studying the world's rarest diseases and in solving some of them has found clues to solve other much larger diseases plaguing much of humanity. Jeff Chen, simple idea, but powerful one. He has built a crowdsourced validation system for natural compounds that can replace synthetic and expensive pharma in some cases. The idea is centered around the fact that no one can own natural compounds and therefore there's no money investing in the evidence it takes to prove they work. Dr. Amy Baxter, funny and smart about how pain works and how we can think differently about it. Pain is the learning system for survival. It's a signal that something needs attention. We've also grown accustomed to instant gratification and get rid of the pain immediately, often ignoring the underlying reasons for it Reframing and learning to see pain differently, therefore, has enormous opportunities for our broader health. Short-term pain for long-term gain, you know. Please watch. She was also super funny. Liana Fink, cartoonist for The New Yorker, moved me. Wonderful talk. Self-deprecating in such a human way, but with important lesson for us all. Her problem with God is that he is just too confident. Sounds familiar? So she wrote a book about Genesis with a more uncertain type of God. Yes, a woman. Funny and inspiring. Angeline Murimirwa. Educate a girl and most problems are solved. What she's leading in Africa just deserves our awe. Real leadership there. Another 2023 audacious project grantee. Carlos Rodriguez Pastor. Another inspiring example of people doing incredible work through public-private partnerships. This one is in Peru, where Carlos has led amazing work in schools, hospitals, and infrastructure. The world needs more leaders like Carlos, for sure. Mark Edwards. Really appreciated this talk. 50% of all pregnancies are unplanned. 50% of those were on contraceptives. The solution there that he has prototyped in Delaware reduced pregnancies, abortions, and child mortality rates significantly. He is now scaling to other states. Unwanted pregnancies are a root cause of structural poverty. Huge opportunity here. Another 2023 Audacious Project grantee. Alwa Arthur, another favorite. Both what she spoke about and how she spoke about it. Dying. She's a death, death doula. As you know, I'm a bit obsessed with the concept of living in reverse, about approaching and embracing our final days first, then go on living. She was amazing. Reframing dying has a lot of potential for living. Shu Chu. Chris interviewed TikTok CEO. Judge for yourself. TikTok can is changing the world. Is it good? 
What can be done? Are you concerned that TikTok is owned by a Chinese company? Sarah Kay, always delighted to see Sarah at TED. Her spoken word poetry rocks my soul every single time. Vinu Daniel, very creative Indian architect, building houses from mud and other recycled products by taking an extremely local and circular approach to construction, important for India and for the world. Cheryl Lee Ralph, a very personal and powerful story around self-belief and what it is that we tell ourselves. David McWilliams, an Irish economist, making the slightly unusual case that we shouldn't listen to economists in times of rapid change. Funny delivery with deep insights drawn from poetry. The gist was that, quote, the best people lack all conviction and the less good have passionate intent, William Butler Yeats. And finally, Krista Tippett. Waited the whole week for Krista. You know I love her. She's the voice of humanity for me. She's the explorer of our deepest yearnings. I love her On Being project and how she always inspires audiences. She spoke about three things. Seeing the generative narrative, how we are living in the midst of emergence, how we are co-creators of our story, embrace it. And secondly, living the questions. We are obsessed with answers, but there aren't many in the midst of chaos. Just live with the questions and the answers will emerge. And finally, embrace our calling and wholeness. We all have a calling that is bigger than our jobs and our purpose must be to connect the dots and become active participants, participants in shaping the world we'd like to see. Phew, I'm sure I missed a few. I didn't mention artists and music breaks and other great events and moments. But you can follow releases on TED.com and again, I will update this website with hot links as they are released. For the more ambitious of you, there's a blog at TED that covers all sessions that I've linked to. And if you want to compare this year list to my list from last year, you can also find that here. And lastly, why don't you join us at TED next year in Vancouver on April 15 to 19? It would be so fun to share this with some of you. Let me know if you're interested. Please share if you found some of these ideas and talks interesting and valuable to your life. That's the whole idea of TED. Ideas worth spreading. Have a great week.